Okay hey guys, Amy here. How are you tonight? I'm going to go ahead and do some playing. I can't sleep. So I'm going to try out my new paints in my new journal. So I thought I would just videotape it. Oops, sorry about that. A ton of stuff on my desk. These are all the strings that I pulled off, which I'm kind of bummed about. So I do have some clear gesso here. And I might go through and just kind of gesso the edges of those burlap pages, maybe. We'll see. I'm not sure yet. Anywho. Um, oh, well, that's a bummer. Let me go ahead and take this off. Again, this is the Dina Wakely Media Journal, the multi-surface journal for mixed media. It's got burlap. Um, craft paper, watercolor, I think, um, maybe canvas paper, and yeah, it's pretty cool. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So I guess we're going to actually start in the back here, and we are going to test some of these paints and I think this is the watercolor paper we're gonna start with and again these are the dilutions paints I'm just gonna have it set my Mod Podge there my Mod Podge there maybe we'll work on this side isn't that pretty paint you guys oh my gosh gorgeous and I do have a brush here I'm not sure if I'm going to use the brush or if I'm just going to kind of use a baby wipe. I think I'm going to use a baby wipe. Especially since this is watercolor paper. And I just want to test it out. So again, this is Peony Blush. Here, I'm going to do this. This makes more sense, hey? Sorry, guys. Okay. Ooh, that was a pretty pink. Okay, so that's the peony blush. It's a very, very, it's a uh, pink Easter bunny. Cotton, it reminds me of Peter Cottondale. <laughs> Don't ask me why I saw that. Okay, now we're going to try... Rose Quartz, and these are a heavy body paint, acrylic paint, and they go on smooth, but you have to make sure that you keep the lid very tightly closed. Um, I'm going to flip this. Again, I'm just using the paint that's in my lid. This is a really pretty pink. We're just going to go right by it. Oops. I'm out of frame here. You can see the difference between the two pinks. Very, very pretty. I do have a bubblegum pink too, but I'm not going to pull that out. I just want to focus on the new pastel colors I love. What's funny is that they're actually... Oh, this one's not open yet. I'll get to that in a minute. Is that they're actually were um, released in the fall. This is the Mushy Peas. A very pretty... Pretty color. Let me see if you can see that. So there's the difference between the two rose quartz and peony blush. Rose quartz, peony blush. And bushy peas are next. This is awesome paper, you guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's the mushy peas. Grab a new baby light. Again, you want to make 
sure that you put the lid on these right away and fairly tightly. And this now is the Periwinkle Blue. Oh, you couldn't even see that. Jeepers, sorry. Uh, I'm running out of room here. It's terrible. That's the Periwinkle Blue. Very pretty. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to be better. God, this is a real... It's a fluid, but... I don't know, I feel like it's a heavy body. I don't, doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> it can't be fluid and heavy body. <laughs> Excuse me. Now we're going to try the vanilla custard. This is really pretty. I love this. Oh my gosh. Love, 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 love it. <clears throat> Again, I'm just going to take my wet baby wipe, get a little bit on there. Oh, this paper is so amazing. I love it. And last but not least, is the laid back lilac. That one's upside down. That was a very pretty color. Again, find a clean spot on my baby wipe. Just take my lid, get some paint on there. And test it out. Ooh. These are very pretty colors. I really like them a lot. Definitely. These are going to be fun. These are great pastel colors. Very, very fun. I'm excited to use these. Um, yeah, definitely. So that's all six of those in the new. And I don't know. It feels pretty dry to me. I don't have anything on the back. No bleed through. It's already drying. This probably is a little... No, it's doing good. So that's it for the Dilutions. Love them, love them, love them. They are just so much fun to play with. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test them in my... Well, i got two Jane Davenport. They're both the same, which it's got watercolor paper in there. This one's falling apart. And yeah, it's barely been used, but I have charts in the back. So I'm going to test it on this paper. I'm going to test it in both the dilutions as well. The black square one and then my large um, dilutions, whatever size this is. I don't know, 11 by 14, something like that. So I will go ahead and do that and then come back and show you the difference rather than you watching me do the whole thing again. All right one is the Jane Davenport journal which is watercolor paper and it's kind of falling apart sorry but you can see they're very pretty I love 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 them peony blush rose quartz vanilla custard mushy peas periwinkle blue and laid back lilac okay this is what they look like in the Dilutions um, Black 8x8 Square Journal. And let's see if I can hold them up together. Whoops. <laughs> I'm such a klutz. I've been busy, guys. Big time busy. Um, so you can see they're definitely more pastel. Um, the yellow, this looks more yellow than, you know, that. Okay, 
And then I tried it in my new Dina Wakely journal, and I tried it on the um, the canvas. Or wait, no, this is watercolor paper as well, but it's a higher quality watercolor than the Jane Davenport one. So let me show a comparison of those two. I, I use this with a baby wipe and this I use with a brush so it does look a little bit different because of that as well but pretty close to being the same um, on the watercolor paper so that's what that looks like and then I tried it in my large dilutions right here so you kind of get an idea see if I can zone in on all of them. I so again, that's what it looks like on the black paper, the Black Dilutions Journal. The paints look very, very different. These are very opaque and they feel chalky on this paper. But it's really good quality paper. And this is what they look like on the Jane Davenport Watercolors Journal. And then we're coming over here now to get this out of the way. The Gina Wakely watercolor paper journal. So I haven't tried it on the burlap or any of the other pages yet, but I will at some point. And then we've got the 12 by 12 dilutions. Excuse my mouse on the table. I've been doing tons of stuff. Okay. So I just wanted to come on and show you that, you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. You can totally tell by um, the same paints, you know, how different they look in on different types of paper. I absolutely love the Dilutions paints. If Okay. Here I also tried the sprays on some altered puzzle pieces. They're kind of cool. I use three different colors. Layback Lilac, Periwinkle, Blue, and then the the green. Mushy Peas. Um, before I did this, though, I Mod Podge book paper. You can see on there. Then did a little bit of gesso. When the gesso was wet, I stuck them together like this so that they created like a little bit of texture. And then now I just need to put my focal point on there and decorate them. Um, but I love them. They're so pretty. They're different. And then you guys are going to laugh at me, but this is a toilet paper roll pocket. So you can put, well, that's not going to fit. Let me show here. So you can use this in a journal. And I painted this as well. So there's the back. First I gessoed it, and I need to decorate that as well. And then I just played with a couple index cards. Um, here I thought I would make like a little notebook. Again, toilet paper roll. Recycle, reuse, repurpose. That's going around, I hear. <coughs> Excuse me. And then here's a larger index card. So I wanted to kind of play around with the sprays. And then, of course, when I did that, I grabbed these other items just to soak up the spray that was in the bottom of the box so I didn't waste any of it. I feel like you go through it pretty quickly. I'm just not used to it yet. So, um, Next up, guys, I finally got the January Junk Trunk Kit assembled. I'm still not done completely decorating it. Um, but yeah, I have been busy going from one project to another. Um... These are all items that were in the kit that I tea dyed. Okay, so we've got tags, cards, um, pockets. Here's a piece of fabric that I might use as a pocket. A glass seam bag, some papers. Um, this is the um, the library card pocket that will go in the back of the book. So I'm going to go ahead and incorporate these 
in there as well. This is that Sorry Ribbon. Um, I just added a couple beads to it. I love these orange beads. And did I tea? I, did I, I'm not sure if I tea stained this or if it was already that color. It might have already been that color. Okay, so here's the book. And as you can see, that's the front cover. It's about four by six. This is what the spine looks like. Isn't that fun? I love all these beads. I ended up just using the large wooden beads and not adding all the little tiny ones that were left over. I'll show you in a minute. I put some lace on the inside here and just glued that in with tacky glue. And I believe I did not have to stain this. It was already this color. This is that lovely velvet paper. And then this is all tea dye paper that I did most of it and a couple sheets from her kit from my Nicole mom's kit uh, there I just added a stamped image so I haven't really done a whole lot of decorating in here just a little bit of stamping here and there there's some ivy and green I think I used uh, close to my heart ink. There's some stamps at the bottom. This is really cool. I put this on um, a muffin tin. can't remember who I saw do that. Um, I haven't done anything yet with this. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I might make that a pocket. I don't know yet. Okay, so I think this is the paper from my Michael Mom. It's a little bit different than mine. I love how that pattern. This is that graph paper. Yeah, that was quite an experience doing all this tea staining. Oof, a lot of work. So you can see I haven't... Here I did a little bit more stamping. Um, here I did some stamping. But not a whole lot of embellishing yet. I was lucky to get this thing. What happened was is I got to the point where I had to sew the signatures in. Everything was all nice and ready to go. And then I just I couldn't decide which beads I wanted. And then today I'm like, okay, I'm just going to put them on there. And it doesn't matter, no rhyme or reason. This is so lightweight too, you guys. What a fun journal this is. I'm very, very pleased that I purchased it. And wait till you see all the leftover stuff. Um, so a lot of the same papers. Again, only three signatures. Here's a little bit more lace. And there's the back. And then there's the spine again. I just love it. So cool. Now, I might get like a wooden embellishment and make it look kind of coppery gold or you know somehow match the beads a little bit and put that in the center here I'm not sure yet um, and then I love how it ties with the sorry ribbon excuse my fingers I have been creating all day so they're awful the paint and ink and uh, actually alcohol ink which takes forever to come off I've washed my hands about 30 times <laughs> Alright, so there we go, you guys. I'm so glad I got it to this point. <laughs> I'm actually currently working in this journal. Um, let me set this aside. So that is why I was really in no rush to get this one done. This will probably be my next one that I use. It's so lightweight. I love it. It's lightweight. That one might be a travel one, maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, so let's go through what is left over in the kit real quick. You guys are going to freak. If you get a chance, check out I'm a Cool Mom. If she ever does a kit again, um, I think she's going to be doing one soon. I'm just not sure when. I don't think she's got a set date, but she's working on it. <laughs> um, I, this is what's left over. 
all the beads. I know. Isn't that cool? Like, I'm going to be able to use these on the next journal. And all of this lace, guys. I mean, holy smokes, that's a lot. I still may incorporate some of this in the journal, in the current journal. Um, these, I want this one to be kind of a cookbooky one um, because she sent all of these digital images. Um, and some vintage recipes. So I think I'm going to make this next one a cookbook journal. But again, I am in no hurry. I've got a lot of things I want to collect before I'm ready to do this one. Um, these are the fabrics that I saved for it. They're like picnic-y. Um, this is what's left over of the cover. That lovely, lovely material. Oh. Wish I could get more of that. And then this is the pretty flannel material, which it's a large, pretty large sheet. I don't know the size. And I'm not going to measure it right now. Sorry. <laughs> Enough to probably make two journals that same size. Um, there's some other little goodies. I thought these would look better in this one. And then a folder. So a lot of stuff left over. Um, and I'm going to continue to add this and make a really nice cookbook with all of my favorite recipes for my mom and my grandma and sisters and all that kind of stuff. So that's what that's going for. All right. So thanks so much for watching. Um, I'm pretty much done with this kit for now. Um, I'm probably going to just stuff these inside here and um, work on embellishing it when I'm ready. Um, I'm in no hurry. Now that I've got it bound, it's going to go on my shelf for a while just to kind of relax. <laughs> All right. And then um, I will be back in a little bit because i got a couple more things I want to show you. Um, I could actually do a quick flip right now of this journal. So I think I've showed this in one of my previous videos. Um, this is a Tim Holtz thing. This I found in my mom's crafting stash. I think she used to put these on pillows. This is an old Reader's Digest, a vintage Reader's Digest book cover. I had to completely redo the spine. It completely came off. Um, in fact, I think this is a completely different piece of wood or not wood but cardboard um, and then I had to try to um, so I just use twine and if you can kind of see it's got like a metallic -y shimmer I use all different kinds of stuff on the spine all different kinds of stuff I couldn't even tell you gold paint um, liquid pearl or not liquid pearls but um, the powder pearls stuff um just all kinds of texture modeling paste all kinds of stuff just to give it like a cool look um so that's that one i think this is a 1965 or a 1966 could even be 56 i'm not sure but it was a super super old one it was just completely fell apart right here so completely new spine um, on the inside cover here, I just put in some paper. It is a very delicate spine, so I don't want to press too hard down. And I'm already, I'm getting, it's, it's a pretty thick journal. It has five signatures. And I forget how many pages each. I'm not going to count them right now. Sorry. <laughs> um, but I made this today. I made this cute little pocket. And guess what this was made out of, guys? This is made out of, let's see, do I have one? No, I don't. This is made out of um, a light bulb um, holder. You know, those things when you get to buy a box of light bulbs and the little wrap that's around it, that's what I use to create this pocket. And I use my new Simple Stories um, paper to decorate it. I love, love, love it because it doesn't look too St. Patrick-y. And then I just put in this little journaling card. 
It says pinch me. These are the stickers. Added some little hearts. I pinch back. Pinch me, I pinch back. And then, so I actually made this a double pocket. Okay, so I don't know if you could see that or not. Let's see if you can see. Let's see how that, that's one of those light bulb. <laughs> hey, it worked good. It made a nice wide pocket. What can I say? Recycle, repurpose, reuse. <laughs> and then this is just um, an old paint chip. Let's just roll through this real quick. So I did that today. And then I also did this pocket. And this is made out of a toilet paper roll. And um, I did the same thing. I Mod Podged music paper and book paper. And then I stamped that bird. And then I just took a white gel pen and made the dots around it. Oh, and then I, I'm sorry. I painted it with, um, oh, I painted it with these. I haven't used these. My Jane Davenport Mermaid markers. Love these, you guys. Oh, my gosh. They're fabulous. They're fabulous, fabulous. So I just added a little bit of color. And then I just took a watercolor paintbrush and just kind of blended the color. And then here's another one of those tags that I need to put a hole in, maybe add some ribbon and embellish it a little bit. So this needs a lot of work too. This is my grand's it's gonna be two now, but this was his picture. And in here I just have a Chinese restaurant menu because I ate Chinese the other day. And then here is from the wrapper from the um, chopsticks and then this is the fortune cookie I don't know why I I goofed and had this here but it was sticking out with the chopsticks I ended up taking the chopsticks out because it was just too bulky I'm like why I didn't want everything sticking out and then I ended up leaving the ribbon stick out which I'm not sure if I still if I like that or not I may trim that off yet let me know what you think about that if you think I should trim that off or not. Um, so anyways, I had glue there and I had to put something there. Because I had to take that off. And then I just folded it and stuck it on the envelope. Um, other than that, it's just pretty much... Oh, I added this bag today. This is an old bag that I hand stamped a long time ago. When I was a close to my heart consultant. It was on one of my display boards when I was trying to sell this stamp set. And <laughs> these color ink pads. I had a whole display board of this with all different kinds of things and yeah I kept everything and so I'm like okay well that's vintage and it's clean and it looks cute and there you go so I slapped that in there today um, I added this fabric today this is from um, a sample book that I got years ago so I'll be able to put um, something in there I have a sewing machine I don't really know how to sew um, I'm going to be learning that. I actually have my mom's sewing machine. What else did I do today? That was it, I think, in this one. And then, oh, and then my altar book. I've been working on. Flip. I love Diana. Love these lips. Here, I'm going to slow down. And I'll zoom out a little bit. Let's see the whole thing. Okay. So, I'm not sure if this is done yet. But that's where we are with that. This was one of the first pages I, just, I did, so not that hot. Don't judge. Kitty cats. Some doodling. Um, I'm having fun with this. Um, this was out of a, an art magazine. Lots of layers going on. You get the book page, and then on top of book page is more paper, sometimes tissue paper. Yeah, lots of stuff. Three different color inks. It's a doily. And then I put like little dots around it. I love that. And then these are the lips. Look at that nail. 
with the little gun chain dangling. Love it. This was a fun background to do. Absolutely. And I love the smokiness of the Stabilo pencil. Tim Holtz paper doll. This page is just got gesso and the base coat on there. Not sure yet. Not inspired yet. That's as far as I got. This is about as far as I got. This is a elephant pop-up. I need to color the bubbles more and add more stuff on the side here. Um, but I stitched this, as you can see. Stitched it down. This is a pocket. So here are the pockets right here. This is this was inspired by Tammy Brackett, Heavy Metal Heart, Tin Foil, Cardboard, Alcohol Inks, Stays on Ink Pad. And then this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful eyelash trim that Elizabeth Brewer, Scrap and Lizzie sent me um, along with my order when I had ordered her unicorn lace. So that was fun. This was fun to do. I want to do more of those. This is um, just watercolor right on the book page. It's not a whole lot. And stamping and washi. So not a whole lot going on there. Um, but then it's also sewn together. As you can see. Punch, punched and tied these little pieces of that eyelash trim. Love it. And I tied it all along. Here are the other pockets. The other pocket, I'm sorry. So I want that to stick out like that a little bit. And these are coffee stirs. <laughs> and they're little Tim Holtz paper dolls. And then I just took some Distress ink and Distress them up, and they're fun. They just go in here. You know, and you don't close your book anymore at this point, so they should not get smushed. And anybody who handles it, you want to make sure to tell them, don't try to close it, because this is about it. <laughs> Aren't they cute? They're so fun. Love, love, love it. All of these pages were pretty much inspired by... Um, Lori Marie Jenkins. She taught me all of these techniques. Um, book paper, book painty papers and doodles and layers and this was fun. Not done with this one yet. I got uh, this was a painty paper. I know she looks kind of horrid right now, but I've got something really cool planned for this page, which actually was inspired by Life Mix. So stay tuned. She did something not too long ago, and I thought oh, perfect. Um, I came across her face while I was doing painting papers last weekend or the weekend before. I can't remember. And I had this background that I did with, um, made a crackle with the acrylic paints. And yeah, this was a lot of fun. So I'm not done with this yet. This is the, um, a three image thing. So this was a lot of fun as well. This is actually acetate. So when you flip it, you can see her through that window, and you can see her through that window. So we've got the two girls, and then the acetate in between. Which again, Lori Marie Jenkins. Could I add more doodles to this? Maybe, but I kind of like it the way it is. Um, this was a fun background, acrylic paints and alcohol. You can see, isn't that cool? three different color paints and then of course Snoopy and a hat I still want to add like a little pom-pom or something and doodles and then <laughs> this is actually a broccoli sponge but I made it look like a tree like the geckos were <laughs> in the tree this isn't done yet either this needs to be outlined and doodled and whatnot but I just did this the other day that's as far as I got. Pretty, pretty, pretty with the flowers behind her. This is this cool rock paper, which I just sewed, added gold and pink um, to just to kind of bring out the texture more. Not sure what I'm going to do with this one yet. 
I may add some lace and really funk it up a little bit. Um, this one was part of the book page. It was, and then it was the Pledge of Allegiance. So I stuck that in there with the United States flag, and then I doodled around it. So this is the other side of that rock paper, which has a, a, a flatter texture, but still texture. And then I used my fabric of steel pit. Um, I've got some jelly roll pens, which I put one of these in the giveaway. Um, this is made out of a light bulb thing. I did this today as well. And then this tag you had seen me make a long time ago when I was making Kimmy Kim's thing, which I finally sent to her. Just did some doodling with the gel pen in the back. Um, this page isn't done. This was an accident. I think this was black gesso. I don't remember what the pink is, if it was. Oh, yeah, I do. I was using up some red paint. Um, that I had used at Valentine's Day. And then I thought I would take my silver embossing pad and just kind of go across it. Well, it was so old, it just balled up and got mushy, and I had metallic ink everywhere. So I had to go through a variety of different things to try to get this to um, become permanent. It took days to dry. Days. And I embossed it, and I heat embossed it, and yeah, it was crazy. And so now I still don't know what I want to do with it. So there's that. It's got a lot of glitter in the back and a lot of texture going on here. It feels amazing. And then this was the puppy dog. This is watercolor background. I love the veiny. That's from, like, gesso. Putting gesso on both sides, closing your page, pulling it apart while it's wet. It creates such cool texture. Love it. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. That's what those lines are. They look like veins. And then this is my little hidden pocket page. Or hidden compartment. With my little puzzle piece. My altered puzzle piece. A little bling around her eye. Those are like real gems. So that's what that is. You can see. You glue quite a bit of pages together. Show you how to do that sometime. And then this is my last page. So I still got some work to do. I still have some doodling to do around this one. But this is pretty much done. I wanted to keep the library pocket and the name that the librarian had written. And then I put another one of my tags in there. So I kept that. And then I also, like I said, I kept the integrity of this front page. I liked that for some reason. And the stamp of the school, where it was from. And then the cover is gessoed and ready. But the cover will not get done until these last final pages in here are complete. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So five, I'm down to five. And then you store them. So this is what it looks like from the side. I can't close it anymore. I'll wreck it. It'll crack and break. This is what it looks like from this side. Front. And you just display them like this. That's how you display them. So you won't ever close these again. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. Um, next up is scrapbook or scrap bin Saturday. Um, wait till you see my card sock bin alone. I haven't even gotten to my texture papers or decorative papers. You guys are going to flip when you see what I've got. I've got so much card stock. I should not be allowed to cut any paper until it's all gone. <sighs> So much to do. So much fun. I hope you guys are playing. I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much for watching. If you